And we are live. Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Wizardry 8. Last time we were here, we collected some stuff, jumped off a waterfall, and the only person in our party with wings managed to die from fall damage. An interesting start to the game. Now, previous... I'm just going to take us back. We, we previously started just at the beach where we crashed before, so I'm just going to take us all the way back through here, right up to somewhere new. So, by the way, an interesting function to the game, when you're holding the shift, it allows you to run around at a faster speed. Normally when you do this, you can't search for stuff, which means that hidden items and the like won't be visible to you. However, because we have a ranger in our party, that's not really necessary, as the scouting ability replaces that. Look, I didn't... something's moving. Worthy opponents. Well, I certainly feel a bit surprised. Welcome back to combat. At least this isn't a simple enough enemy, if I could stop right-clicking on it for five seconds. I really should be having our bar putting that thing to sleep. Understood. You'll notice that uh, our ninja here is actually attacking twice. With throwing items, you can actually dual wield them. Thus, this uses the dual weapon skill more than anything else. Since ninja is all about this sort of thing, generally you want to focus quite a bit on dual weapons, more than it, as well as everything else. Interesting little touch. Uh, your combat log saves from previous sessions as well, so you can see little things that have happened previously in case you're forgetting it, what happened. Now, previously we went through here, jumped into the water, and died from fall damage. Since we've done all that we need to here for now, including not pressing the big red button, I'm going to take us to somewhere new. Upstairs. This will be the upper part of the monastery. Lower monastery. I see a creature, friends. All right, friends. This will take teamwork. And welcome to our first mini boss, Gregor. Gregor is a level five, but we've already identified a bit about him. He's based off the sp the bu spider bug enemies, but is significantly more With powerful. Pleasure. So generally, we want to get up to close to him as quickly as possible because he's not going to need to approach us. Or maybe he will, and I'll just be proven wrong. Oh well. You'll note that he's already dodging a fair bit. That he's a bit of a dodgy boss. Right, so first off, I want to make sure that he's asleep, so he's not going to be a pain. Power sleep. Check. I'm going to have a Sonic show a bit of our magic. I am going to mind stab him. It shall be so. Not only will this do damage, it should, should also scare him a bit. Which will give us a bit of free Unless you know it fails miserably. As per usual, Bayard is still in our front line. Sleep is enjoyable enough, but it breaks Understood. almost always on damage, so generally you're just using it for a bit of a breather, for anything at all. You'll want something that lasts a bit longer. You'll note that Gregor's armor, for lack of a better term, is rather hard to pierce. Quite a few attacks are doing no damage, which is kind of the problem with him. That's why I'm hoping to at least get something major to hit. 
And you know not of our psionic failure to psychic powers. Oh. At least we're still getting pretty far on damage. Understood. That is still probably one of our fast attack fastest attackers, which is hilarious for a spellcaster, you'd think. However, generally you want spellcasters to have high speed since they're usually causing all the buffing, debuffing, and healing. Very important. As you can imagine. Now, you'll note the yellow bar is almost out on our bard over here. Yellow, again, is stamina, and without stamina your character will actually fall unconscious. So, generally, once their stamina is low, you just want them to defend so they're not burning anything. If they have to dodge, they'll still lose stamina that way, but there's not as much you can do about that, unfortunately. Gregor here is almost dead, thankfully. Because he's currently making a stamina. How exquisite! Experience is its own reward. Experience is the best teacher. Good! I'll do even more damage! That's good. That's quite a few people leveled up, so let's go through our Samurai's six level up points. Mostly want a bit more strength, since that's fairly important, and then just pump up speed and uh, dexterity. Not dexterity. We will, however, want to give him a bit of intelligence since he'll start spell casting soon. Spoilers. Samurai learn how to cast magic. So, yep, so they want that. A bit of critical strike and a bit of close combat. Just generalized skills. Now, psionic. Leveling is very boring, as you can imagine. So, you just intelligence, you want senses. And as per usual, whenever you level up, you can take a new spell, and that will also add extra spell points to that area. So, for example, I am s considering not a sleep spell, because we've seen just how un unhelpful sleep is. Slow, however, is a very useful um, mass debuffing ability, which is something we're going to kind of need in the future. So, that's as slow is a water-based ability, we want to put a bit into the water magic just so we can get it going. And um, his big thing here is mythology, so we want to focus on that. Now our ranger here is going to be useful, as per usual. Since we'll be pounding, pumping up his scouting as much as possible. Unfortunately, however, nothing really new beyond that. Next level, hopefully, we should be seeing a couple of new things from several of our party members. What is your will? Very useful thing. Always remember to heal out of combat because that's probably the best chance you're going to have to get to it. Now this tunnel is a little bit important. You'll see the bridge is here and the power is down. So once you actually press the big red button below, you can't get the bridge go to go back down. So make sure you get everything on the other side before you go. It's not really useful at the moment anyway. You can see a door on the other side, but we won't be opening that until a little bit later. But this, however, will be useful once we get there. So first off, don't fall. Who is that? And say hello to our first little NPC. Psst. Hey, was that you? That ship crash? Wow, I thought you were goners for sure. You ask me, something real bad's going on. Cause your ship wasn't the first to fall out of the sky. 
All right, so a couple of important things. This is sort of the chat window that every NPC has. You've got, where is All right, so a couple of important things. When you're actually interacting in sort of any meaningful way, you'll be using options from this box, tr tra trading, pickpocketing. So if you want to steal something, you can cast magic on them, but this is usually just meant to stuff to affect them like charm person. You can actually recruit certain NPCs into your party later on. They'll fill up the spots up here and up here. Uh, you can choose to attack them if you're a terrible, terrible person. We're not going to be terrible, terrible people because he could actually be useful. And then that's just how you leave. Otherwise, if you want to actually chat with him, you've got this sort of section here. So you can choose, they've got default options over here that you can click on to interact with them. So you can sort them, or you can use this box to ask about anything you want, or ask for locations, as is pretty obvious. So, so for example, we can ask him about himself. Traveling salesman at your service. He's a shopkeeper. That information's worth a little something. He's a shopkeeper that wants money. Bribery because he's a terrible, terrible person. The monastery? It's Higardi, the Brotherhood. Their temple, I guess. No one's in there now. They took off a while ago. They've got another temple in Arnica, though. A guy named Braffit runs it. Say, you been to Arnica yet? Well, if you haven't got plans, that's a good place to go. There's all kinds of stuff happening there right now. It's just south of here. Alright, so you can, as you talk about stuff, more options open up. So you could just talk about any rumors. Well, there is a rumor that you might be the third messenger. So, messengers, you're basically sort of coming for magical artifacts in the game. The first two have already come. One of them is the Dark Savant. I can't remember who the other is right off the top of my head, but I think he, he'll he probably come up at some point as well. Nothing is really left unsaid. You can always be friendly. Now this is important. Nothing much to tell you. They're nice. In fact, I st uh, get most of my stuff from them. Yes, you totally just get it from them. I believe that. Now, if you want to ask about something important or anything you can think of, just type it into the box and you can just sort of... Oh, Arnica's the city of the Hagardi. It's right on the coast. I get most of my stuff from there, in fact. If I recall correctly, you stole most of your stuff. Not that you'd say that. You'll need to go south of here. And it's useful for getting basic directions. But you can do really anything you want. You can even be jerks to them, like say. So hey, you. Of course, it needs to actually recognize it, but it can recognize other things like cursing at them. That's not very nice. And it can range from um, being very them taking offense to them taking it as you flirting with them. Be very very careful. Careful you don't mix the two up. So, for example, we can usually sell our goods to him, what little there are. We won't be using that dagger in this lifetime. Yes. But most of the stuff we do have yes. is... Yes? The infamous battle axe that no one will ever use. This battle axe is a terrible, you terrible weapon. And we have about far more short bows than is strictly necessary in this game. So that's how you do PC items. I should probably explain a bit this, this interface a bit. So um, when you're actually shopping, you can buy stuff. You use, well, you use the entire bottom screen really. So the first box is just uh, when you're buying or selling. You can select the options. You can give stuff for free, or you could steal if you want to be a jerk like that. Remember that if you're not, if you're careless, you're, they're going to be unhappy with you and. Um, their opinions on you actually affect things. So you select the item you want to sell in the second bo middle box, it will usually show an icon on the right and you can just click the sell button. You can also split stacks using this option here. Right, so we've sort of got a bunch more stuff than we ever thought. We can also sell party items like this ale, this bastard sword, because which one it's going to be used. You find a lot, realize, you usually end up finding out that you have a lot more in your inventory than you ever really imagined. It's a very good idea to get rid of it. 
you can get a lot of money from getting rid of it, and you're going to need a good portion of that money. So we can actually go through the stuff that he does have. Most of it's fairly basic. Bullet stones are always good to have around, as are corals. Ammunition generally is good to have around. You can start getting upgraded ammunition or like already. He actually sells the resurrection powder here as well, like the one that we I displayed for you earlier. I certainly didn't waste it by accident. That was all intentional. As per usual, you can right-click something to examine it, and if you want to look at someone's gear, just right-click on them as well. So, for example, we want the suede pants, because at least one person is going to need it. And we should grab that feather hat as well. It's just not, it's another plus two AC, and I'm sure we haven't really gotten much in the way of hats, so that'll be useful. Otherwise, early in the game, you can actually sell quite, get a quite a bit of money from stuff that you don't really need. Now, it's very tempting to sell the um, curing stuff, but you'll find that you'll need it later on. Yeah. So it's best to keep it on hand. Spell books are always good for selling, but since we're actually trying to use them, then we're going to keep it. But I'm not going to be really using the stink bombs. So I'll sell Is that. I mostly want to get that power yes. because it's yes. There's only so much to eat. Not so. It's not really like there's only so much in the game, but you want to have some on you just in case because it really sucks if something bad happens and you're not prepared for it. What now? You bellowed. What is your will? You bellowed. So I'll just quickly go through our party items. I'm just going to get rid of that, and nobody's going to say anything about me selling a useful item. Right. Now that we're done wasting time with him, there isn't really much more that you can do. You can steal stuff. You... Wisdom go with you. And uh, whenever you interact with someone, that counts as sort of communication. And some's the other major guy. He'll be coming up later on. And go away. Now, another chest. This is his chest. It appears booby trapped. He really doesn't care about you messing around with his stuff. It's kind of surprising. So let's take a look at this trap. Once again, we've got your basic dagger scatter trap. So you just disarm that device, whatever it is. It looks like a chain latch. And then you disarm whatever this is. A spring, I guess. And uh, we get a bunch of useless stuff. Uh, which we shall automatically sell back. We're going to sell his stuff back to him because we're such good people. Wisdom go with you. Now then, we have a feathered hat. He already has a hat, so he doesn't really need that. I'd love to give this guy some extra armor, but fairies, size issues. But we can, however, give our ninja here some extra. Well, our bard here some extra gear. Our ninja, of course, is a ninja. They have unique gear that you can't really replace. And our gadgeteer here can get a skull cap, which I'm sure he'll enjoy. Right. One more thing is, there's usually a lot of inventory handling. You want to get a lot of it done, just because otherwise it can backfire on you massively if you're not prepared item-wise. Make sure that everyone has at least one stack of whatever important item they're going to be using on hand, just so it doesn't come to bite, to bite you later on. Now that we've just stolen this guy's stuff and sold it back to him, and are running before he catches on, let's get back to the rest of this uh, upper lower dungeon area. I came from this way, so I want to go this way. 
This is more just running around empty corridors. Nice looking empty corridors with lanterns. They look like lights, they're actually just lanterns. We'll be coming back here. So this is another useless item. It's an axe, therefore useless. Dump it on our mule. Got a couple of potions here, a light heal potion, another light heal potion, and a poison, kill poison. Easy enough. Now this is important. It's a safe. We will be back here in a very short while. And there's smelling salts, which is just good for curing unconsciousness and sleep. Oh, and our bard's gotten a bit better at identify identifying stuff. Can he actually identify anything in here yet? Nope, thought not. Right. Fun little fact, if you're going fast enough, there is actually a degree of physics in this game. Will be a party. I would like you to re note that they were not there when I came into this room. Just want to point that out. Understood. Now, who remembers how AOE works? If you said it's targeting by group most of the time, you would be correct. It shall be so. It shall be so. By the way, these are all cockroach. This is this game's idea of what cockroaches look like. And you can already see why I hate mass combat in this game. If you're wondering what they're doing, the AI can actually map around, so they're actually taking a long way around to get behind me from the looks of it. Since, well, the dungeon is just a giant mass of, um, na nav maps, nav meshes, nav whatevers. Pathfinding, not my best thing. By the way, they're roaches. I would like to point out that they put them th to sleep through a wall. Our bard, ladies and gentlemen. Nice little touch. Their animations are actually slowed down as a result of being slowed. It's a nice little touch, I feel. It's just like how if they're asleep, they stop moving. Our gadget here, ladies and gentlemen, missing at point blank range. Well, not quite point blank for him, but still. I am going to swap out bond stuff around. He's at the back, so I'd like him to actually contribute. So for the most part, there isn't really anything around here. Customer. Just, you know, roaches that are asleep. I actually forgot about that. Now, since we're not in combat, we can initiate combat anytime by clicking this. Or, you know, that one could wake up while I'm trying to give an example. Not too happy. Understood. Uh, let's get this over with. Oh, look, he's already asleep. And awake. Nice little touch. Sling stones can knock things unconscious.
Now this room should look familiar. That's because we were here a couple of moments ago. Okay. Feather dots, always useful. Right click everything that you come across just because there's a slight chance you'll get an artifacts upgrade if you do. Now this room will probably be where we finish up, depending on how long things take. All around us. Our very, very depressed. By the way, that's how you sl swap it. split items. You can rejoin stacks that way. Use and drop. And that's how you inspect them, but you can also inspect items by simply right clicking on the. Now this room. There are coffins in this room. These coffins have stuff in them, like items. So these two are going to go into the bag, but our bard is going to take this leather helm. Our bard is going to put this leather helm on, thus giving a feather hat to that one, and this one can get a skull cap. And complain to me about... Presumably carrying a bit too much. Um... Okay, maybe you don't need to carry quite so many items on you. But let us continue. Alright, so our second one also has items. Into this bag for you. Our third one has a skull. This is an apparition. They are obnoxious. In fact, I believe we met one before. I didn't like it, them then, either. Um, now, the annoying thing is that then. these are spellcasters, and they are going to make everyone go insane. So the best thing we can try to do is make it go insane. It shall be so. Go crazy back. Or it's going to try to scare everyone. Ineffectually. It tried. <laughs> But apparitions are still quite tough, as you can see by its mouth. It also has a lot of stamina. It's very noisy, and it's very, very hard to try and kill. Understood. If we had a priest, we could be using Turn on Dead, which would actually be fairly effective, but no priest. We have a steel helm. Right, now we're actually starting to see some proper armor. So, let's see. Oops. Now, our ninja here is still going to be making use of his excellent dexterity and speed to prove that he can still attack a zillion times a second. Now this little thing, this is a this one has slight restorative property, so you should always drink from it. it just gives everyone a bit of a heal, heal, which is generally fairly useful. And here we have a battle axe. Great. And here we have a trap! Ow. Also, people are sick. Nauseate is an annoying little debuff that has a chance, makes people have a chance of no longer comp acting. Please note the water doesn't work a second time. Uh, much better. My inner balance has returned. So we'll finish off with this one. And it will have one item a quilt tunic. Another nice plus four AC. Yes. AC is everything in this game. But here it is on the Hallberg. He, however, will be very happy for it. And that's th this room sorted. That one can be a bit nasty, but you usually will have one trap, one apparition, and that's about it. So it's not too bad.
Now this room. You'll note this totally innocuous, innocuous looking part of the wall here. If you're having a slight bit of trouble, well... My inability to draw squares aside. You should be able to see it by now. Think Zelda. What would Link think if they saw that? Well, he'd think they should just blow it up, but that's not the point here. Now, remember, this statue, you can interact with it. If you press the wrong thing, that falls down. That's any part. You don't want to be standing there. What you want to do is stand here and interact with the skull. That will reveal a, si a key. You might have seen, heard, seen something that uses a key before. If you haven't, well, you weren't paying attention. Also, this powder is always here. It's a nice little thing. So we will very, very, very quickly run all the way back to that very first room. At least we get a lot of exercise in this game. Now, you can't just inter right click on the safe and expect it to work. You do need to use the item on the safe. In here we find another resurrection powder. Well, at least we're down to, we're two up from where we were of the three that we could have had so far. Anyway, we're almost out of time here, so I'm going to quickly run us through the final Even little part the of this area. Must rest sometime. And for, first, I should probably get everyone to rest a bit and remember my way around. By the way, that looks odd. I would love to know what that is. For now though, we have no idea. But the final part is through here, so let's take a bit of a breather, because everyone's nearly dead. Well, not quite, but still. Okay, go up here. I sense and suddenly, bugs! Conflict awaits. We don't know what they are. They're probably spiders. But for the sake of argument, we have no idea what they are. So I am going to try to slow them down. It shall be so A nice little thing, all six of these guys, one group. Remember what's good about groups? Your spells hit all of them. Good bloody job. I feel like a bit of a jerk at the moment, just for how much I've just taken them out. They're sleep and slowed. Slowing can last, last a little while. Now, for debuff spells, generally increasing the power just makes them more effective and last longer. It doesn't really make it slow them down more, it just slows them down longer and is more likely to. You're also more likely to get levels out of it. The fastest way to level stuff is just to use it at max power, regardless of whether or not it's going to be remotely successful. Please note that despite the fact that these are small little spiders, these are small little spiders with a lot of health. It shall be so. Once again, if you want to just recast a spell quick recast a spell quickly, you can just click on it there. It shall be so. Slowing is useful in that not only it reduces their attack speed and uh, movement speed, it also reduces the ability to attack. Zyke, for example, our samurai is still displaying his ability to attack really, really fast. And it's proof we're also seeing that at slowing things down, it causes the game to actually slow down a bit, just because it needs to cover the re enemy reaction. And if an enemy slowed, its reaction takes longer. Needs work. Good. Now, our psionic has pa paralyzed and gotten paralyzed, so he's no longer able to really contribute. 
Thankfully, however, with his nice slow at the start, I think he's really shown himself to be a contributing member. Of course, since he's paralyzed, someone else gets to actually start the round. no longer slide. An extraordinary triumph. My aptitude increases. My talents have been rewarded. As per usual, after a long My fight, balance has returned. a lot of people usually get level ups. So we will want to, of course, get our bard up since he's kind of our major debuffer at the moment. Also, the chatty person of the party. Good to have around. And our gadget here is just getting better and better. Which is useful because he's actually going to be useful. Just not for a little while. People will know, you'll note that I've been pumping up engineering. Engineering is going to be useful very soon, it's just that, well, not only does it govern what they can actually create, it also governs their skill with gadgets. We just haven't found any gadgets yet. Pressing that switch will open up a gate, the gate that we saw in the previous main room. And that will in turn, once I find my way back there, I'm going to take a few moments, remember the way to go. I also appreciate that bullet stones always found in nice little piles just lying around. Never understood why, but there you go. And here's the end of the lower monastery. So we are going to go to the upper monastery and then finish up there. Alright, thank you for joining me today, and I will hope to see you again in next time.